Hi, this is Danny Lewis, also known as Enzyme Black, and I'm a course developer and tutor here at Point Blank Online. And you're watching Production Analysis. So this is a musical idea that I've got on the go and this all started with reverse engineering that Disclosure remix of Jesse Ware. So over the next eight minutes or so, you're gonna see me backtrack, go back to the analysis of the actual notes in the running remix and then work towards this really nice deep house chord and bass rag. So I've broken the remix down into three audio clips. The first one is the riff in its more simplistic form for four bars. The second one is where it starts transposing up and down and it's more rapid in terms of the actual pattern. And then finally, I've managed to get it a bit more isolated here and that's gonna be the one that I'm gonna to use to try and extract the chord data. So Melodyne works well with more isolated sound sources. That's why I've picked this particular clip. And even though it's filtered with a low pass filter, I think we're gonna get the MIDI notes out. Let's open up the browser, audio units, ceremony, Melodyne. And I'm gonna double click on this. It's gonna load it onto the selected track. We need to click the transfer button and we're gonna record into Melodyne the audio. So I'm gonna click on this now, push the transport. So there we go. Now this is at the moment is the monophonic algorithm. So we come up to the algorithm menu, we come down to polyphonic and it's gonna to attempt to read the musical data. I'm looking for some musical kind of patterns. I'm looking for chords visible and I can see a cluster of notes that look like they're chords. I think this information here is superfluous so I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna double check that it's okay by playing and listening back. Now that sounds fine to me. Don't worry about the audio quality. All we're trying to do is to isolate the notes. So some of these might be right, some of them might be wrong, but I think it's gonna be better for us to check that by looking at the MIDI data itself. If you look at this, you can notice that we've got this kind of regular chord occurring and then it goes up over here and then it goes down at the end. That's feeling like the kind of data that we could use. So let's come up to settings, save as MIDI. I'm gonna save this out to the desktop. and we can use this MIDI data as a clip inside Ableton assigned to any of the instruments that we want to use. So we've got two MIDI clips here connected to an instance of analog. You could use any analog synth that you have, but this is one that comes with the Ableton Live Suite. What I did firstly was to do Command A to select everything and then bring the velocities up. It makes it clearer and easier to see what's happening with the notes. The next thing I did was to select all of these and quantize these. So Command plus U to quantize. Now I was looking for what I would class as a, a kind of model chord. So the one that I would use and replicate because the pattern is using the same chords at different positions in the grid. So this one here, for example, let me play this. I'll put the click on as well. Let's move this over here. And I'm just gonna bring a copy down here. Now that's good, but I remembered hearing a higher note. So I'm gonna make this with something around there. So you can see what's going on. We've got these chords. I can then bring a copy over here. Let's bring this over, shorten this. Let's make a copy. In fact, I can use the same one here. The durations are not necessarily correct at the moment. I'm just showing you how I was forming these chords. And then do the same here. So we've got identical positions in terms of the actual piano notes. And this carried on until we had a section where it changed here. So I could take these away and I could just make a copy here. So this is the kind of stuff that I did earlier. So here, look. This is higher. And that sounds to me like it's literally just the same chord, but played up on the keyboard. So if I take this, there we go. I didn't copy that, I should have done. I'm just gonna undo. Let's hold down the alt again. There we go. So you can hear what's going on. It's actually really quite simple. It's the same chord, but it's just transposed. And that means it's gonna be the same at the very end. So I take all of these, just literally drag over. There we go. 
So I can pick them up, take it down there. Let's take the end. So that's the pattern, this is it. And this is more accurately reflecting the original because what I did was I played the stab section and I copied the note durations. We have a mixture. So you have the longer one here than the shorter ones, longer, shorter, longer. So have a listen. Now that's great, that's working really nicely. I'll show you what I did to create the actual sound. So if we come back to analog, it's just a few changes here from the default setting. What I did was to basically set the amplifier envelope, as you can see here, maximum sustain level, and I've got release short at 97 milliseconds. And this is creating the volume behavior of the sound, so it's nice and short and punchy. The filter I turned on, low pass 24 dB per octave slope. The frequency at 420 hertz, resonance at 16%. And the filter envelope is key here to getting the sound there. So shorter release, decay at 626, starts quite bright at the beginning and then goes down in frequency over the envelope. The envelope amount was 5.55. So let me just play the sound without the filter. And then I'll turn it on. So it's got a nice kind of warmth to it and it sounds more like the original sound. The chorus is used to add the stereo width. I'll take it off. And then on. Now we're missing a crucial ingredient. The original track, once it got going, had a real nice fat bottom end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new MIDI track and I'm gonna come over and we're gonna select another instrument. We're gonna select the operator. And what we're gonna do with this is gonna take a copy of the MIDI clip over. I'm gonna double click on this. I'm gonna take away all of this information except for the lower notes. Select these and then do shift and down arrow. So we an octave below. And I wanna see how this sounds. Just gonna take this and make sure that we can hear it. So I'm gonna put this on solo. So you can hear that nice warm bottom end now. We've got this sub bass. Just gonna take the release of the volume envelope out just a little bit longer. Gonna see now how that sounds with the two together. So this is where everything comes together. This is that deep house instrument rack that I've created. The inspiration was Disclosure's remix of Running. I've taken the same note spacing and put it into the chord device here. So if you take a look, I counted up the amount of semitones. And if we take a look at my rack, you can see that I've got plus 10, plus 14, plus 15, and plus 19 semitones. That creates this really distinctive sound. The operator is running at the lower octave as well. So the two combined create the sound. Also, I've added a filter. So I'm keeping the actual shape of the filter envelope over here, but I'm adding another one. You can see this in the rack over here, the auto filter. So take a listen. So although we were copying the actual note spacing of the Disclosure Remix, what we've ended up is something that we can use entirely for ourselves in our own unique way. So the inspiration was there, thanks to those Disclosure guys. It's a wicked remix, but we've got ourselves something now that we can use on our own productions to create our own vibe. Now, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, you might wanna check out the Ableton Live Sound Design course, because in that course, we build a lot of racks instrument racks and also effects racks. It's a very broad ranging course that covers all kinds of audio processing and experimenting with things like the warping. You can find out more information about that course by visiting the Point Blank Online website. That's pointblankonline.net. And also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for free tutorials. That's youtube.com slash pointblankonline.